Fine, we are now recording. So let us start with any apologies for absence. Councillor Glenn, Councillor Robinson and Councillor Clark. Oh, and on ongoing apologies from um, Councillor Sparks. Yeah. Do we accept those apologies? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Representations from interested parties. Anybody taken the effort to try and join us on this meeting to say anything? Can't see it. Uh, declarations of interest. Firstly, any disclosable pecuniary interests? No. Um, then any other interests? Uh, um, I should declare I know the pages at um, 60 South Road. So right. do I. But, but but as it's only trees, I don't think it's um, don't think it should make that much difference. Probably not the most contentious application <laughs> that to deal with. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think we should probably all declare an interest in the application in respect of Dovedale, due to its proximity to the Joan Strong Centre. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, as uh, as the council owns those premises. And I'll just add in another one, and again, some councillors might want to think about it. 16 East Road is our former councillor and transition outdoor man, David Wood. Mm. So I think I'll declare another interest on that one, just for safety's sake. I think I should do the same, yeah. I don't know him as well, so... No, I, I don't know him. No, well, that's I, mean, I, know, I know of him, but I don't know him very yeah. well. So. I mean, we knew him when he was on the council. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I know him in other capacities as well, so one way and another. Um, right, Crack the minutes on. of the meeting that was held uh, on Tuesday the 3rd of November, present myself, Councillor Fuller and Councillor Humphreys. Um, they have been circulated. Anybody want to propose? Councillor Fuller, it looks like. Councillor Humphreys, those of us who were there and all in favour, which would appear to be a full house. I haven't got a set to sign, I've realised, but... I'll drop them off to you tomorrow, David. Fine, thank you. We'll sort it out. Um, <clears throat> that takes us on to the planning applications themselves. Yay! Once, I think my um, little guide is actually in the order it appears on the agenda. Um, and the very first one is Arundel Town Football Club, um, application put in by Cameron Holmes, who we've seen quite a bit of one way and another in council meetings this year. Uh, this is for the erection of two 20-foot lockable containers, um, which are metal containers, with a roof structure. Um, essentially, they're going to mount two of these things. They're going to be, I think, six metres apart, and there's going to be a roof structure so that the middle area between the two containers is actually a, a covered but open area and I've put in dimensions and so on. Um, the purpose is to basically store grounds maintenance equipment which they don't yet have but they want to get these in place so that if they can then uh, use grant funding to acquire the equipment they've then got somewhere to store it safely which seems logical. Yeah. Um, the the sighting that they're proposing appears to be essentially behind Waitrose. So they're not going to be desperately visible from that many no. places, I suspect. Um, I saw that um, there had been some correspondence, I think, between the club and ENC about ENC wanting them to show access, which rather surprisingly isn't um, off um, East Road by Waitrose, but actually appears to come in practically via the wharf and across the fields uh, from the way that they demonstrated it. Not that I suspect it makes an awful lot of difference what the route is to it or from it. Um, I saw no comments on the NC planning portal as recently as Sunday morning, I think it was, when I was looking at it. I uh, can't speak for anything that might have appeared since. Councillor, yes, sir. 
who owns the fields? Because you can't just run a road across somebody's field. I don't think the plan is to run a, a, a road across. I, I think it is literally they will gain access across that field, which I think is quite possibly all owned by... Aldo uh, School. By Aldo School. That's what I thought. And how much of that is actually rented to the football club, I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, certainly at least some, if not all of it. I, I doubt I that the access is an issue, but I stand to be corrected. No, I was, I was part of the initial discussions on that, and they're willing to cede the whole of the land behind Waitrose all the way to the other side to the football club, which they finally got done. So, yeah, it's Andal School land or uh, the grocers. Yeah. Um, anybody got any issues with this? No, no, no none at no. all. I mean, in, I, mean, I might comment that, um, in fact, it might be beneficial because I, yeah, I, I can't remember if it was to the council or me personally, but there was a complaint about the amount of litter that gets thrown over the wall from the a Waitrose car park into that field. So it might be, um, you know, it. It could only probably only help that I think if but if there's someone there they've got containers there that are being used then the what littering is happening probably will change and be be better for it so yeah it's gonna be it's what they need really don't they there's a lot more football play there and they need their storage don't they well we had the when Cameron was came before the committee before before in the full council I think he was saying that their expansion plans are you know quite ambitious and they um, they need it so they obviously need these things to happen and if we and at that meeting we were fully behind their proposals so I think it would be um, churlish to turn around now Agreed. and say we can't do it. So I think uh, fine. Um, I think we'll record that one then as a no objection. Um, that um, moves us on to 60 South Road. Um, trees and um, as you'll note from my um, comments one of them um, is to be felled others seem to be purely tree husbandry so I doubt that they worry us the one that's to be felled the applicant makes clear that they planted it there in the first place but now they want to get rid of it because of quote unquote excessive shading um, there's not a huge amount of information to be gleaned from the portal about the application. Um, but I would have said certainly the reduce the crown and reducing a lower east lateral and a crown lift, uh, both tree husbandry, both covered by our policy, essentially not to say anything. Um, the other one. Certainly my instinct would be to just simply say no objection subject to any contrary view of the tree officer, but I don't know that type of tree. I have to say it doesn't mean anything to me at all unless anybody knows something about them. No, no, I mean, I think I, I think our, our safe callback position is always tree officer. on the tree um, officer and you know, let them decide. Al, have you got any view? I've, I agree. Yeah. Our, our usual reply. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, no enough. objections, subject to etc. Let us be consistent. Yeah, uh, well, know. that <laughs> happily takes us on to Forhern Road, um, and that is a straight piece of tree husbandry. So, do I take it, given our comments on the previous application, that we'll respond with a no objection to that in the usual yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That brings us on to 16 East Road. Um, this is all a bit peculiar um, in as much as there has already been an application for 16 East Road. We looked at it in January. Yep. Um, we basically weren't worried by what was being done, but we were rather more worried about the impact of it being done in as much as we weren't keen on the idea of things being parked in or left on East Road such as skips or vehicles or what have you, and we certainly didn't want them in the car park. Um, so we made that comment, um, and 
uh, in fact, it was granted. So I was a bit puzzled to see it again. And I have to say, I'm still slightly puzzled because as far as I can tell, it seems to have gone in in order to clarify matters with regard to uh, access and um, on-site parking. And essentially, um, all I could see was a new plan which showed that if you look at it from the road on the right hand side, there's an area of existing block paving. There's a, a crossover across the pavement from the highway and the new plan shows the highway, the crossover and the, that part of the um, plot as well as everything else. Um, it seems to me that on the face of it, all we would do is repeat what we said in January. Um, but I might say for all the good it did us because I don't think that there were any specific conditions imposed uh, when it was granted in line with what we said. Mm. Um, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't just repeat our concerns. And I would suggest yeah, that. No, I, I, agree I agree with you. I agree with you, Chair. Yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, so do I. I think it's uh, I think it's important that we this access and parking thing is um, important, especially they're going to have skips and things there. Right. Um, so I think so effectively, if you just regurgitate what we said in January, and, uh, we'll see what happens next. Um, right. Nine Latham Road. Um, this is a single story rear and two story side extension um, on a property. So if you're going kind of up the hill between St. Peter's Road and um, Bellamy Road, it's on your right hand side, probably about sort of a third of the way up. Um, the thing that struck me about the application was that what they were proposing to do on the side looked to me as if it pretty well took up what's left of the plot. Um, and I did wonder whether it might constitute some kind of overdevelopment uh, because of that. Um, there weren't any comments on the ENC planning portal as of Sunday morning when I last looked. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe Maybe neighbours aren't as concerned about it uh, as I felt or perhaps ought to be. Um, but they could, of course, um, have put in something that we haven't yet seen. Um, I don't know whether others have looked at the plans or, in fact, are familiar with where the property is. Um, yeah. It may be that I'm being slightly overcautious about it, but certainly that was my instinct, that it was perhaps overdevelopment. Well, I think the, what my only comment on it, you know, wandering around there, is that um, I think it's part of the part of the planning, the ENC planning people, is to make sure that there is a there is a, you know there is a, a regulation between that that space between the buildings has to be a certain amount, and I can't see that they would have passed it. Um, or it will get passed without that being then picking up on that. So maybe it's something we should point out in in our notes, and then it will come up when it goes before them, and they will look at the plans and say, well, actually, there isn't enough space between these two houses. Um, we we can't have it like that. So perhaps it's wise for us to 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 sort of point out the fact that they seem to be too close and then let them make that final decision later on. But that was yeah, I've delivered leaflets there. And uh, there's, there's a fair amount of space between the buildings, to be fair. It's not as congested as other parts of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there certainly is well, now, but I'm not convinced that if they put what they plan there, there is going to be all that much space. But yeah. uh, I, I, I like Councillor Humphrey's yeah. idea to a degree because... Yeah. Uh, we could, without actually objecting, say there's no objection provided that um, <clears throat> ENC consider that what is proposed doesn't amount to overdevelopment in terms of 
uh, getting too close to the boundary between the two properties or words to that general effect. Yeah. Yeah. Al, any thoughts on that? No, that's it's, certain, it's worth letting the neighbours know. They probably don't know. Well, the, I mean, it could be that, you know, the next door neighbours are elderly and don't really, haven't really cons fully considered exactly what it means to them and what it would mean to a future occupant of that house. So it's, I think it's beholden to us to perhaps point it out this, in this early stage before it gets yeah. passed. And I, then, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know how we work on that, but I would... I think the house to, the, the house is attached to would want to know, and the, definitely the people on the other side would want to know. Mm. Mm. Uh, whether we do... I mean, mean, in theory, you'd have expected them to have received a letter in the post from ENC advising them of the application. There should no, be a notice somewhere on or about the premises, although yeah. I have to confess I haven't specifically been to look to see if there is i think there's one post there outside david but i think the thing about those those planning posts um they do get posted up around or near but i i you know i'm i'm surprised yeah. sometimes lots of people don't read them well, that's yeah. right. you, you or i might because we show an interest in these Absolutely. things but i, but, I mean the I think vast majority people, of people, people don't so have, you know switch off immediately but if we highlighted the possibility of a concern then somebody will look at it if yes. it is a ground for concern doubtless they will deal with the application accordingly if they're satisfied i suspect we're going to have to be satisfied yeah because there isn't any other obvious reason to object to it it shows that we've considered it in any event well absolutely it, it, it's it's not just a question of saying oh it's only another extension you know let it go through yeah which, you know, you sometimes fear happens. Not, yeah. not I have to say, with this council, but one does wonder at times. Been, at, least we've, at least it's been considered. OK. Um, mm. if, if you've got that, then, Lisa. Um, that brings us on to what might <laughs> potentially be the more contentious application. This is Dovedale. That's the former mined building, the bungalow... Uh, literally on the corner um, so it adjoins the Joan Strong Centre uh, and because it's on the corner it's on the road leading down to the Longstay Car Park know, yeah. but it's also on East Road and councillors will doubtless recall from the point of view of applications that there was an application for um, a little terrace just a little way further up the road, same side as that bungalow, um, where I think we felt that the number that was being sought was too many. Mm. I think we objected on that basis. Uh, needless to say, ENC granted it as asked. Um, this one, um, I mean, they're quite interesting properties. If you look at the um, kind of line drawings on the application from the roadway, it would give the appearance of being a two story property. Um, but in fact, what they're planning to do is to put a kind of attic office into all three to make them suitable for home working. Um, there's nothing necessarily obviously objectionable about uh, what's proposed other than this it seems to me and it, it, it's the point that's been picked up on by highways there is on-site parking for um, seven vehicles three of those are side by side so if you access the site immediately to the right there are three parking spaces yeah. to the left there are four, but they're in tandem. So you've got one vehicle parked behind another potentially, and that twice over. That is often regarded as an issue by highways because they just don't like tandem parking as a general rule. Mm. Mm. And of course, you could argue that if there were two properties rather than three, you could then have five spaces between the two properties. So that's 2.5 cars each without any tandem parking. Um, so that's 
perhaps a, an observation. Um, you'll see what I've said around um, how the property is going to be bounded at the back where there's a kind of self-seeded hedge line. Uh, that is going to be grubbed out and replaced with a close boarded fence. Then at the front, some sort of uh, metal fencing with um, what are described as pleached hornbeam trees. Now, I have to say, uh, much to my chagrin, I don't actually know what they mean by a pleached tree. Somebody else probably does, but I'm afraid yeah. I don't know what it is. Um, but what also struck me was that in writing up their sort of design and access statement, it was almost as if these people didn't actually know the site they were talking about because there is this reference to this um, sort of semi-used council building, which is actually the Jones Strong Centre, as far as I can see, yeah. uh, immediately to the east of the property. And then a description of other things, which seems to overlook entirely the fact that there's a long stay car park down there, and therefore potentially a lot of traffic movements going straight past the entrance. <laughs> to the um, so, um, what do people think? Um, I, I think it's important that we, I mean, having, when we last time we went to that big session at um, East North Hants planning, and we had to sit through all those other planning applications. I remember them going through one that was out at Rawlins or something like that. And they, they East North Hants objected strongly to tandem parking, and it was rejected at that planning meeting uh, East North has because of the tandem parking. Now, I think we, um, I, I, I think the tandem parking is wrong. I think you're absolutely right, Chair. We should bring up again the parking, the access, due to the fact that East Road is a very busy road at certain times of day. It is potentially going to get busier because they've nearly finished all those houses that are that back on to that site now as well. So there's even more traffic. You've got the schools down there, you've got the co-op, you've got everything else that happens down there and the long stay car park. So it can only get worse. So the parking is a big, parking and traffic is a big thing, I think, for me anyway, on this. Well, they've, they sent something on the 12th of November planning, uh, transport, and they've said uh, they don't, again, tandem park, it will result in on-street park. On street parking is turning and manoeuvring will be extremely confined with the so I think the parking is an issue. Um, I mean there's always the option to go and use the long term car park, but the way they've done their parking, I think I'm I'm in agreement with uh, both of you in the fact that it's a bit dodgy. It needs um, to be worked. And by the way, pleached horn bones are ones that are trained to be sort of hedging hedging trees rather than full grown trees. Thank you. I um, thought somebody would know. I'm they're grateful. Hacked back. They're, uh, hacked, they're hacked back to be ornamental trees rather than a natural tree. They're, they're actually quite big trees, hornbeams. I've had them in my garden. Yeah, but I think well, it's a bit like a beech hedge. You know, when if you keep them chopped back, a bit like sort of bonsai, an English version of bonsai. Sound nice. Can I say, <laughs> remind yes, us of a mini roundabout right at the junction? Yeah. It's on the right, and it's not far away. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I think the traffic is my, my traffic is my big concern and parking. If you lose two car parking spaces, they'll be all right, I think. So I think what we're we, what we seem to be saying is that we object to the plan as is, not yeah. necessarily to the principle of uh, the bungalow being demolished and replaced with new dwelling or dwellings, but probably only two so that there will be on there can be on-site parking without the need for tandem parking mm. but we do have some concerns about the impact of development given the busy nature of east road given the long stay park car park and indeed given the use to which the jones strong center is put which means that there are likely to be children about as well it mm. gets very busy and the yeah. schools just down the road as well mm. the other thing well, is that the, the houses that are going to be built off Ashton Road, that is the road through to the Ashton Road site. Mm -hmm. It's going to be much, much, much busier. 
Well, that's true. If you go down Ashton Road, you, it, it will lead you to that new development of um, however many it is, 100 and... Yeah. It's the only way to, to get to houses. Um, so that's perhaps yet another uh, point. So um, <laughs> building up. <laughs> it's an objection. Uh, would it help, Lisa, if I actually wrote something out and emailed it to you? OK, I'll, I'll sort that out immediately after the meeting. It almost needs, David, a, a point by point. I think it does, actually, looking at what we've been yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. So I'll try and um, I'll well, try and set it do. out. Carefully. It's rather like the accident thing that people say one day there will be an accident. That means nothing. You've got to you've got to really give the reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's also I mean we also have to be wary of um, when it's under construction as well. Construction vehicles coming in and out of that site. Yeah. Uh, you know. Even, yeah. So even... if permission is granted, we would also <laughs> want stringent conditions about the construction phase. Um. Yeah, I think that's reasonable as well. Uh, okay, that takes us on to 104 Blackthorn Road. Um, this is a single story rear extension, single story front extension to include a new front porch uh, with a combination of pitched and flat roofs. Um, the, the bungalow that's there at present sits on a large plot um, on the face of it, there's plenty of space on there for the kind of extension that's being proposed. Um, it looks as if they're going to use materials that essentially blend with what's there already. Um, and there were no comments on the... No, there's still no comment. Um, I have to say, I, I would struggle to see a basis for objection to this one, mm. unless somebody has a contrary view. No, mm. no objection. It's just infilling a little bit. No anybody objection. else? No, 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 no objection at all. No. Okay, no, no objection to that one. Um, then sticking on Glapthorn Road, um, this time at number 50. <laughs> um, this one looks a little bit trickier. Um, demolition of an existing garage, um, a three-storey uh, side extension, and remodelling of the existing conservatory to become a garden room. Um, what one notices about this is that the property itself is on the junction of Cotterstock Road and Glapthorne Road, so it's kind of opposite the George, and it's the one that, as I say, literally sits on that corner. Mm. What they're proposing, um, although three-storey, it's, it's perhaps not unlike what we've just been talking about on the Dovedale site, the third level wouldn't involve increasing the overall height of the, the building at all, um, simply utilising roof space, essentially. Mm. Um, and I don't think there's much of an issue around the extension, and I don't think there's any issue around the conversion of the conservatory or anything else. The issue that, that exists and has already been highlighted by highways is that, um, despite the, the, on the face of it, the rather good idea, for once, of knocking down the garage, um, taking out a summer house, uh, which is also there, and therefore providing space on site to enable vehicles to both enter it and leave it in forward gear, as opposed to potentially driving in and then having to reverse out or whatever. Um, seemed quite attractive, but there do seem to be some issues from the point of view of um, highways. Uh, they also seem somewhat concerned at the idea that there might be um, two points of access and egress, one in effect close right up against the kind of junction, and then the other one where the garage and summer house currently are. Um, I, th I suspect that the, that point is not a good point because I can't see that you would be utilizing that entrance um, if there is one. Um, 
to gain access, you would simply gain it um, straight off the Gutthorn Road, straight across into the area currently occupied by the garage and the summer house. Mm. It's still relatively close to the junction, but then it is already, it's not like they're creating a brand new entrance uh, in a dodgy place. Um, so I'm not sure what others th feel about that one. Less concerned, I think. No. Now. Um, there's not going to be a garage, am I right? No, there would be no garage. There's simply I mean, it's space the to park two cars. Yeah. But by getting rid of the garage and by getting rid of the summer house, instead, as I say, of having to essentially enter and leave um, forwards and then reverse or vice versa, there'd be enough space on site to actually turn around and come out frontwards which would seem to yeah. be an improvement and there is yeah. no loss of parking space. It's just loss of a garage, which, well, I suppose, yes, it's allowing another vehicle onto the site, isn't it? I have no problem with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you're absolutely right, Chair, with the, the, the point of the, they've already got the access there on, on a very difficult corner. And at certain times of the day, especially with round the corner, you've got the pedestrian crossing, and unfortunately, just down the road from them, they've got a, um, a post box. So, um, but they've been there all the time. And it, it, is, it is a difficult corner. It, um, you know, I've been caught out on that corner several times with people coming out, but it's not new. You know, everyone's used to it and they, they're, not, they're not creating new entrances to it. And I think if highways have already put a comment there, then perhaps once again, you know, like the previous, we should leave it. So perhaps highways to sort out their problem uh, because they know the difficulties of that road. They know how potential, how potentially busier it's going to get as the schools expand and everything else that's going to happen around that area and the new housing estate down just down the road from it. That they perhaps, you know, maybe we should comment on the increased we we envisage increased traffic on that road, and especially as the cycleway is going to come up Blackburn Road and cut across that onto Cotstock Road, which is, you know, spending lots of money on, you know, there's, there is going to be more foot traffic, there are going to be more cars there. And, you know, we, we just pointed out and let highways hum and ha about how difficult it's going to be in the future. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's fine. I mean, highways will be the, are the experts, we'll let them dictate how it's done. Does that seem, you know, does that seem sort of fairly reasonable way of looking yeah. at it? Because I am, yeah, you know, we, we have got the cycleway coming through, haven't we, up Blackthorn Road and across, and that's a new, that's another thing that we should perhaps appoint to be to um, brought up to them, that there are things afoot that will might might affect this or might not affect it. But at least we've 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 been um, diligent we've looked at it. Wow. Well, I'm just going to say we don't want more vehicles parked on the road. And I think the point about the cycleway is extremely important because we don't want vision to be obscured. So I, I think that this is probably another one where uh, I might need to help Lisa a little bit with the wording, but it's a kind of um, we won't object provided that highways are satisfied of x y and z and in yeah. forming their view we want to draw their attention to the new development the cycle etc etc et yeah Perfect. okay i'll um pop something together for that one uh, right well after one or two rather trickier ones this one is perhaps not a, a contentious it's issue it's another tree. Uh, yeah. It appears to be no, no more than tree husbandry. Uh, arguably the third one of the night. Uh, are we going to make it a hat trick of like comments? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Um, so no objection, tree officer. Um, that takes us to the last property. There are. T uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, it takes us to the penultimate property. I'm getting ahead of myself. At 43 Benefield Road, where we've got a listed building consent and a full consent. Um, it, it looked 
quite dramatic, actually, when you just read the wording of, of it, to replace 14 existing windows in a listed building and two exterior doors, um, and also to replace driveway and pedestrian gates. Looking at the at what's proposed, however, the replacement of the pretty unattractive stroke ordinary metal gates that are currently there for the path and for the drive looks to me like an improvement. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of the existing windows, if you actually look at the property and look at the photographs of the property is, that, that accompany this application, I'd have to say that what's there currently looks relatively unremarkable. Mm. Um, at some point, since these three 19th century cottages were um, combined into one, I think most of those windows have been changed anyway. Um, so replacing the windows is unlikely to be much of an issue. And similarly with the doors, I have to say. Yeah. Um, it, it seems to me they've got good reason to do it. You know, if you read what they say on their application, because these windows and doors are in a pretty poor state, it's leading to problems. It's leading to, to damp uh, drafts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I would have thought that um, making a comment that we have no objection subject to any contrary view of the conservation officer, yeah. who I suspect he's not going to have a contrary view in all the circumstances, <laughs> is probably all we need do. Absolutely. I mean, as, as, you, as, you put in your notes, as you put in your notes, David, the um, historic England has no objection. If they don't object to it, then, you know, absolutely nothing. Exactly. Um, fine. Um, that does lead us to the final application. Um, and perhaps there's a nice symmetry about this. We're bookending our applications with sports clubs. Uh, we started with the football club and we end with the golf club. Um, and what the golf club want to do is to put up a, what's called a driving net and then to have two covered bays. And I put some details down on the little sheet about it. Um, it's not obvious to me whether you would or wouldn't be able to see any of this from the road. Certainly there is quite a, a, a substantial hedge that might very well obscure these. Uh, certainly if you drove into the golf club car park, uh, I think you'd be able to see them. Um, but um, I find it difficult to think of any reason why one would want to object it would appear to be improving the sport, the facilities yeah. for sport in the town. Um, mm. They seem to have got themselves some sponsorship or grant money that would enable them to carry it out. It may almost be one of those applications where rather than simply saying no objection, we might actually want to support it. Or am I getting carried away? You're not yeah. getting carried away. We're happy with that. No, absolutely. No, no objections at all. No objections. Al, are you happy with it? Yes. Right. Um, do, we, do we actually want to say that we support it? Well, does that, by support, do you mean financial or just? I don't mean, no. I mean, literally, <laughs> we, we, we are, if you like, enthusiastic about the application. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yep. On the basis that it uh, improves the facilities available to the town. Yeah. Very happy. Right. Um, that takes us through the. Um, various planning applications, which happily haven't taken too long. Um, in terms of uh, outcomes, you'll see they're all set out on the um, agenda. Um, not entirely sure why the application in respect to Four New Road was withdrawn. Uh, my recollection is we hadn't objected to it ourselves. Mm. Whether we're going to see it come back in some revised form or not, I don't know. Um, but no particular comments to make on that, no planning appeals to talk about, um, which brings us to the last couple of items on our agenda. Uh, the first of which is to receive the public consultation on the draft North Northamptonshire housing allocation scheme, uh, and as it says here, to consider the OTC response. I'll have to be the first to admit that due to constraints of time, I haven't managed to read this document. 
Um, so I'm not particularly well placed to comment upon it one way or other. Um, has anybody actually managed to read it? And if they okay. have, do they want to, to say anything in connection with it? I started to um, plough through it, but um, ploughing is the right word in some ways. I, um, I think it's just got one, when I think the only thing we can do, safely do is say we have received it because it's a, like all these documents that come in, they're, they're ma it's massive and it's and it's full of full of lots of fluff and lots of, lots of everything else that they seem to manage to put into these things. Um, I think we need more time on it, personally. I can't remember off the top of my head what the closing date for responses is, Thank but I don't this. think we would have time to look at it again. My, my recollection was that this might have popped up on the full council agenda, and for time reasons, and because people hadn't had much of a chance to look at it, it was shunted off to us for us to comment upon it. Right. Um, Val... <laughs> Well, I ploughed through it too, and I agree. Um, it, it, it's it's full of stuff, <laughs> and I think we're best off just saying we've received it. And you could even I, say we have read it. <laughs> Pete, Peter's made some comments in there. I don't know if you've received those. Yeah, I did. I, I did see that he he made some observations. Um, I, I'm inclined toward the view, given a I haven't read it. B the two people who've attempted to read it have a identical view about it that perhaps for the purposes of the the meeting we uh, we minute the fact that we have received it but that we don't uh, have a comment to make upon it as a council that doesn't stop individual councillors if they feel so inclined to, yeah. to put in a personal response as long as they make it clear it is a personal response rather than a response on behalf of the council. What's actually happening now is this is um, this, the planning and housing allocation and everything else is going has now become a, a um, you know, for the North North Hants, it's becoming a, a, a political football and yeah. they are kicking it around and it's now going, it's becoming more and more public. And they, I think they're sort of feeling their way through this as to what the, the new, the, the, the algorithm they use for planning and everything else is going to sit with the public. And I think there is enough groundswell out there that North North Hants, the new unitary authority, will be now looking at it and saying, yeah, there are people are worried about this. People are, there is things to consider. We need to go back again and, and have a look. As to whether, you know, what, how, I don't remember the date of the consultation and whether to put it in. So, um, hmm. Lisa, I don't know if you could, check i haven't got the papers because they're upstairs somewhere if the consultation is uh, not going to close until after the full council meeting in a fortnight although it seems quite cheeky we could always send it back from our committee to say well look we've you know, members have looked at it their instinct is is not to start making any specific response to the consultation but it would give council a chance if somebody feels strongly enough about it to to perhaps suggest that we do but only if there's enough time and i'm just not sure if there is okay. so we'll, le we'll leave that with lisa if, and if you see it pop up on the full council agenda you'll you'll know why from that discussion can i just add i didn't feel it clarified anything really that I, I, I think I had the feeling that that's what I was going to end up sort of thinking if I'd managed to make the time to read it, which probably was one of the reasons why I didn't manage to make the time to read it. Yeah. You see what I mean? Um, right. OK, let's move on. Um, possibly briefly um, to a letter uh, of complaint. Um, now, again, it's been circulated um, and it talks about building at 62 West Street um, and its effect on West Street News. Um, having read it, I have to say, I don't think it's an issue for this council. Um, it, it's not a planning matter. 
Um, so I don't think it's a matter for this committee, but I don't think it's a matter for the council either looking at it. It may very well be that the person who has been moved to write it, and you'll see it's been redacted and I don't know who has, um, might be well advised to take legal advice if, if they think that they have got some kind of valid dispute about what's going on. Uh, I do notice there are comments in there about you know people wandering about without masks and doing other things which they seem to think is a is not good in these coronavirus days. Um, we could, I suppose, pass the letter on to ENC. I'm not quite sure who it would be. Environmental health, I suppose, if anybody. Lisa. Um, they're the people I approached. I, I sent the letter to Adam French at the Environmental Health. I also spoke to the piece, two of the PCSOs um, and I also sent it to Planning Enforcement because I wondered whether the part of the planning um, permission made any stipulations about parking and, and things like that. Unfortunately, all three um, bodies have come back to me and said it's not an issue that they would deal with. Um, and basically the PCSO said, really, it's down to the neighbours to speak nicely to the neighbours and try and sort something out. He said, we don't really want to get involved with those sort of issues. It, it can be much easily, much more easily handled if you just have a neighbourly, nice neighbourly chat with the neighbour. Yeah. So that's where we are with that one. The only reason um, Emma and I decided to put it on this agenda was purely because it was addressed to the planning committee. So. Okay, well, that, that, that's helpful. Can I just add, I've delivered down there and it's jolly difficult. Um, it's, it's small enough, the turning space down there. And I, I think it must have been quite stressful to the residents to have this going on. So well, perhaps I, what we should... They do something. Right. Well, maybe we don't, we don't want to appear to have ignored it. it on. So we okay. probably ought to respond uh, it might be that we should sing from the same song sheet as others and encourage uh, the person concerned to try to resolve the matter amicably making a suggestion that if they are unable to do that uh, we would recommend they took independent legal advice uh, as to whether they have any remedies but it's not a matter for the town council and, and leave it at that i agree mm. Yeah, totally. OK, well, that's relatively straightforward. Um, that takes us to the end of the agenda, apart from any other relevant matters for report. Um, I'll work my way around the screen. As there's only three others, it's not going to take long. Uh, Val, anything? Nothing. No, I haven't anything. David? No. Clive? No, no, no absolutely nothing. Um, I haven't anything either. Lisa, is there anything else we should be thinking about? Um, in which case, it seems to me that we can bring the meeting to a close. Thanks I'll, a lot. I'll Thank sort out much, some everybody. comments for Lisa uh, in a minute or two. Right. Thank, Thank you, David. Thank you. Okay. Thank good luck. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. See you all next year. Yes. <laughs> in terms of this meeting. Oh, yes. Yeah. Bye.